August 16th. Beloved, I wish upon all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. 3 John 2. Is it true that God, by setting you aside from active engagements, has set you aside from all duty and labor? We do not think so. Is it too much to say that he is now summoning you, though to a more limited and obscure, yet to a higher and holier, because more self-denying and God-glorifying sphere of duty? Your present loss of health has brought with it its high and appropriate duties, obligations, and employments. It bears an especial message from God to you, and through you to others. Contemplate the work to be done in your own soul, and the testimony through this which you are to bear to the power of divine grace, to the sustaining energy of the gospel, and to the character of God. I ask if the lone chamber of sickness has not its special and appropriate duties, responsibilities, and work, equally as difficult, as honorable, and as remunerative as any which attach to the sphere of activity or to the season of health? You are called upon now to glorify God in a passive, rather than an active consecration to his service. Graces hitherto perhaps dormant, or but feebly brought into play, are now to be developed and exercised to their utmost capacity. Patience is to be cultivated, resignation is to be exhibited, faith is to be exercised, love is to be tried, and example is to be set. And are not these great, holy, and sublime achievements? Who will affirm that there is no sermon to be preached from that languid couch, that sick bed, yes, and it may be more solemn, more searching, more full of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit than the pulpit ever preached. The church and the world have now the testimony of one passing through the present and a personal experience of what he speaks. A sick room is not the place for theorizing upon truth and eternity. All transpiring there is stern reality. The dust of human applause is laid aside, the breath of adulation is hushed, the flush of excitement has faded, and the delirium of an admiring throng has passed away. The artificial gives place to the true. All is real and solemn as eternity. Deem not yourself a useless cumberer, because sickness has incapacitated you for active labor. God has but changed your sphere of duty, transferring you doubtless to one more glorifying to himself. Receive them with meekness your heavenly Father's dispensation, which while it has set you apart from the Lord's work, has set you apart more exclusively and entirely for the Lord himself. Your great desire has been to glorify him. Leave him to select the means which may best advance it. You have thought of health and activity, of life and usefulness, of being a champion for the truth, a herald of salvation to the ignorant and the lost, a leader in some high and laborious path of Christian enterprise. But he has ordained it otherwise, and now by sickness and suffering, by silence and solitude, he has given you other work to perform, which shall not the less secure your usefulness and promote his glory.